I saw the picture and it went, oh, Twizzle. Right, yeah. I, mean, I hadn't even yeah. thought of that. So, so that's something way back into your yeah. childhood. Absolutely. Very often we find uh, with our guests that it's the music that trips that memory. Well, you were saying quite yeah. specifically that it was the I was the able image. to sing one of them, yeah. one of them, but I didn't know what the series was. Yeah, great. So well, now which of those series do you actually kind of actively remember? Well, obviously seeing? Thunderbirds, yeah. and Supercar, yeah. and Stingray, yeah. Four Feather Falls. Oh, right. Um, Twizzle. Yeah, bizarrely. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember anything more than that opening sequence, though? Do you remember anything of the premise? Didn't he have a twisty <laughs> neck? And That's right. Was he the one with the long arm? That's it, yeah. yes, yes. It's quite nightmarish, isn't it? Yes, it was quite sort of yeah. gruesome. You wouldn't make it now. No. <laughs> Twizzle. Didn't it go like that? Something you know? like that. <laughs> Sometimes the little the little catchphrase tunes or the jingles yeah. are... It's terrifying, yeah. isn't it, what goes on in your mind? And stays there for life, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, okay, great. So now let's move on then to your, and you touched right there, your first Anderson memory. So let's take a look at what young Nigel Planer was watching back in 1960, I think. Let's have a look at this. Ooh. Oh. oh, my gosh. <laughs> we come a pretty long way. Honey, we ain't seen no sign of Harkenbanker yet. Maybe we missed him. Ain't possible. Tex, old chap. I hate to mention this, but have you noticed the signpost? Hey, here. It's been moved. You're darn right, Rocky. And look, there's been a buggy passed here. You can see the tracks. Come on, fellas. There we go. Very, very yeah. quick clip from uh, Four Feather Falls. Four Feather Falls. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, we had a sh very short email uh, exchange about this, and there was something rather specific that you remembered about Tex Tucker in particular. Tex Tucker, <laughs> at one point, uh, you obviously haven't found that, yeah. but, but uh, he said, you know, shall we go down that road? And he said, no, we daren't. <laughs> and that made us laugh because we daren't. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Two syllables. Yeah. And it, it turned into like a catchphrase with me and my younger brother. Right. Shall yes. we go there? No, we daren't. Nice. We daren't go. It's very sweet because, of course, now Nicholas Parsons uh, was Tex Tucker. I don't know if you know that. No, yes, really, was he? Was, yes. Wow. Uh, and uh, just recently, we uncovered uh, an unproduced script for Four Feather Falls that was written by Nicholas Parsons himself. It was never produced, uh, but we had a, a, a sort of something of a performance at a, a, a convention in Leicester a couple of weeks ago. And uh, within that, We've also read out the stage directions, of course, and there was a similar phrase which really struck me as being quite charming and old-fashioned. He spoke about um, uh, the, the dog, uh, and it said he barks uh, as much as to say, thank you very much. <laughs> as much as to yeah, say. Yeah, just that phrase. It's yeah, really yeah, quite charming. Lovely. So it's lovely. interesting you picked up something there from yeah, the dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is there anything specifically that you remember about that show? Any of the other characters or so on? We well, saw there Dusty the dog and... Uh, Rocky the horse in that um, uh, title sequence. Yeah. He talks all posh in English. Yeah. And, and he did just then. And... and uh, cut back to text he says he's a thoroughbred <laughs> so it's a yes. it's a joke yeah there you go <laughs> and uh yes i love the sort of yeah the butler character isn't it? it's like mm. the english butler that yeah. all american shows have you've got to have this mm -hmm. the english butler so the, right. the horse i remember yeah <laughs> uh, now cowboys and indians as we used to call them or westerns yeah uh, they were a, a mainstay of, of popular entertainment in the what sort of forties, fifties, and sixties, both at cinema and then on television. Mm -hmm. But what was uh, what was young Nigel interested in at around that time? Knights in armor. Oh, really? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Is that something that's plastic, stayed with you as well? Plastic uh, sword fights, <laughs> uh, which I usually won against my younger brother um, because he didn't stand a chance. Yeah. Um, it's terrible what I made him go through. Yes. Um, and yeah, plastic helmets. Um, Tamba. It sort of stuck with me. Ah. Uh, the 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 uh, hi interest in hi history. Really. Yeah, medieval medieval history at that age. But yeah, yeah. Knights and Armour. And you sort of hit television as a viewer at just the right time. I think by 1964, 90 uh, percent of uh, UK families had a television, so they were pretty ubiquitous. By I can time. remember the the first telly being right. called in. You know, I was playing in the garden. Yeah. We've got a telly. Right. So come, come running in. It was a bush uh -huh. um, with the Bakelite knobs. Yeah. I don't know what year that would have been. I would have been 
under eight because we moved house. So okay. it would have been uh, 53, 60. I was born in 53, so mm -hmm. it would have been 60, 61, 62. Yeah, so around about the time that you would have been watching yeah, Four yeah. Feather Falls, I guess. Can you remember what else you were watching on this new television set? I can remember hiding behind the sofa. There was something <laughs> called The Red Grass, Ooh. which was uh, sort of thriller horrible about a kind of grass that would take over and grab you. Yeah. <laughs> right. People would... would get infected by the virus of this red grass and my elder brother was allowed to watch it and I wasn't meant to watch it <laughs> and I snuck in while my mum was uh, cooking supper I think yeah. and and thought well I'm going to watch this thing and it scared the jeepers out of me <laughs> oh, and, and it gave me nightmares for ages right. this idea that this red grass would sting you and then get in you and, yeah. and uh, infect you. There's something about a young mind that's so impressionable. Yeah. Because I can't imagine you know, or think of anything that I've experienced in the last 20 years that would stay with me for the rest of my life as much as something I saw 50 years ago has stayed with me. That's right. Time. That's right. It stays with you kind of whether you like it or not in a way. Yeah. And, and That's right. And, and of course, at this time, uh, the world was getting excited about the space race. Uh, yeah. Landing on the moon was a mere sort of nine years away from Four Feather Falls. And of course, Jerry Anderson then excelled in his visions of the future, the likes of Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet and so on. So how aware of you, I guess you would be in your teens now, of, of the space race? Well, saw the moon landing. Oh. I remember watching that on telly. That's oh. like a family event. Yes. You go and sit and watch that. Yeah. Um, and they're... Yeah, walking like puppets on the moon. Yeah, walking like puppets on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can remember that, yes. Yeah, and uh, but we were scared as well of the of the of the Cold War as well at the time. I mean, do you remember that? Yeah. We, everyone's talking about uh, building bunkers mm -hmm. and d nuclear devastation. Yes, uh, when I was a teenager and early teenagers, the, and the whole thing seemed to be, you know, the space race was between Russia and America. Yeah, Yuri Gagarin, the first one up there. Remember that as well. Yeah.